My darling, it's you I'm worried about. The stress, all this squabbling. Oh, I'll be fine. I'm just like any modern woman, trying to have it all. A loving husband, a family. It's just I wish I had more time to seek out the dark forces and join their hellish crusade. That's all. Vintage neighbors, welcome to the Vintage Girl Next Door. My name is Lacey and today we are going to do some sewing. Today I'm going to show you how I made this spooky sheer cobweb 1950s dress from a vintage pattern. I just want to say I'm not a professional seamstress by any stretch of the imagination. just thought it would be fun to take you along with me while I made this spooky fun Halloween dress. So let's get sewing. The pattern I used was this Advance Pattern 6120 from the 1950s and this pattern was sent to me by my sweet friend Elizabeth and she's actually on YouTube at Little Antique Me. I will link her channel for you. She is literally the sweetest friend ever and she sent me a whole bunch of patterns. I'm so excited to try them all. Um, but this one I was especially excited about and as you can see it has 11 pattern pieces but we didn't use all of them because I just did version 1 of this dress. And I am just going to lay it out and get everything all cut out and also to get it marked. So I just am using a little piece of chalk to mark this fabric. It was a little difficult the way the fabric is to get it to show up, but a piece of white chalk worked just fine. And with these vintage patterns, if you've never made one before, uh, they don't have writing on them like modern patterns do. It's all done with like perforations in the pattern piece. So you have to make sure and get those all marked and let you know what's what on there. And I did have a little bit of an issue with one of the pieces. So what happened was I cut out this other bodice piece, the front piece, and the pattern piece had been cut by accident and the missing piece was in the pattern envelope, but I didn't know that until I got it cut out and was super confused. So I ended up having to cut that one out again with the missing piece taped to it. So first of all, I'm just sewing the darts on the back piece as per the instructions and using my chalk marks to know where those darts need to be. I am doing the same thing here, pinning the darts and I'm going to get those sewn in. Now that's how the front piece looks and now we are joining the two. I am just pinning them at the tops of the shoulders and joining those first. Next up we are sewing the collar lining. So this is actually the part that has the scallop. This is what makes the scallop neckline. So then I'm pinning that piece on to my bodice top around the neck. And this is where you have to be a little careful with this pattern. The rest of it is super easy, but this part was a little bit 
tedious um, just sewing around those scallops to make sure that you get the nice like scallop edges of the neckline was a little bit hard. I feel like the next time I make this I can probably do a better job and get them to be a little bit more like pronounced but I mean I'm still happy with the way it, it came out. <laughs> Now I am just doing a little hand sewing and we're tacking down the inside of the sleeve and the hem and just turning it under kind of like at the armpit zone. Just turning under the bottom and then the top part just is a regular hem. Okay, and now I am joining the two skirt pieces together. Overall, I really like this pattern. I'm definitely gonna make it again um, with different fabric and I, I love it. It's a pretty simple one to follow and to make and I really, really like it the way that it came out. And next I am just joining the bodice to the skirt piece. I had to be careful to make sure that I was not doing it backwards. Sometimes I get confused with the what sides of the fabric need to be facing each other. Anyway, now my least favorite part of any project is the zipper. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing now. Has a side zipper, I'm just sewing that in. Just really, really don't prefer sewing zippers. <laughs> And now I have just turned under a quarter inch on the bottom for the hem and just sewing that first and then I'm going to iron it under one more time, another just like fold it over one more time and bring it through the sewing machine again. And that is our bottom hem. And that finishes up the dress fairly quick and easy. So then I decided I wanted the purple slip underneath and I had a vintage slip that was kind of yellowed anyways and so I used some purple writ dye and went ahead and dyed that slip so that it was a nice pretty shade of lavender. And this is the finished look, you guys. I'm so happy with how it turned out. Like I said, I would totally make this pattern again. I plan to. And my vision of my spooky, sheer 1950s dress has come to life and I couldn't be happier with the result. My brooch was a gift from my grandma. It was hers, it's a vintage one. My hat is vintage, thrifted. And my shoes are 1940s, thrifted. My nylons are from what Katie did. They are the purple seam stockings. And my crinoline is a purple one that I found on Amazon. If I can, I will link it for you below. And of course the fabric I picked up at Joann's. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this fun little sew along video. And if you did, 
Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Forget to check out my merch shop. It will be linked below. And let me know in the comments what fun, spooky things have you been doing this month to celebrate the spooky season. And if you have not subscribed already, please do so. I would love to have you stick around and join in all of the vintage fun and be a part of the vintage neighborhood here on the internet. I appreciate every single one of you and all of your comments and all of your love and for being here. And I hope that you are safe and feeling loved wherever you are in the world. And I will see you soon in my next video. Bye. Thank you.